All right, so halocarbons, um, halogens are in group 17. Any organic compound that contains a halogen substituent is a halocarbon. More specifically, if a halogen replaces a hydrogen when attached to carbon, that is called an alkyl halide. So we'll use both of these terms when we're talking about halogens on organic molecules. This is an example of a uh, alkyl halide. The difference between alkyl and aryl halides are we have uh, group 17 halogen elements bonded to a benzene ring. That makes it a, an aryl halide. So here's a diagram over here for an aryl halide. Fluorine onto a benzene ring. What we want to do is we want to talk about naming halocarbons. Uh, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, uh, and you know a little bit about this already, so that's good. For alkyl halides, okay, so not attached to benzene rings, the big thing is um, the prefix indicates which halogen is presence, present. So if we have uh, fluoro or chloro or bromo or iodo, all right, we replace the ene, so chlorine would be chloro, okay. So you change the ending of the halogen name from ene to o. So it would be like chloro, would be the first part of, of, a, of a compound with chlorine on it. If more than one kind of halogen is present in the same molecule, the atoms are listed alphabetically. So if you have um, uh, chlorine and fluorine attached to the same carbon chain, then you would name chlorine first because it comes alphabetically first. The chain also must be numbered in a way that gives the lowest position number to the substituent that comes first in the alphabet. So the chain, the carbon, let's say we're talking about a carbon chain, it has to be numbered with the lowest number for the first element that is. If you have, uh, let's say you have, uh, you know, three carbons here, and I've got fluorine on the first carbon. What this, what this point right here is saying is that you can't say that this is 3-chloro. You can't say 3, but you have to say 1. Okay? And if there is um, um, something like this, okay, there's a chlorine here and a fluorine on this one, then you would have to say the chlorine is written first, so this would have to be uh, carbon number 1. So it would be 1-chloro, 2-fluoro. F, F, pro, propane. But we'll get into naming. I'll show you some examples here in a second. Um, let's talk about the benzene ring here finally in this note. Similarly, the benzene ring in an aerial halide is numbered to give each substituent, that is each, each one of the halogens, the lowest number possible. So a benzene ring is numbered to give each substituent the lowest possible number. That's a bit of a redundant phrase I see right there, the lowest possible number possible. Awesome. <clears throat> so if we, if we move to the next page, we have some examples that I want to walk through with you. So A, right here, this is a benzene ring, right? And this is a chlorine that's attached to one of the carbons on the benzene ring. And so this would be chlor, that's the for the chlorine, O, remember, chloro, not chlorine, and then benzene, we just say chlorobenzene. There's no numbers because there's only one chlorine, and it's just attached to one of the carbons, so it doesn't matter. We don't have to number the carbons. There's just one substituent there. Okay, if we look over to uh, B, okay, there's actually two here, so I'm going to just draw a line right there. There's actually two uh, compounds there. So, in the first one, we have a carbon chain, one, two, right? Methane, ethane. So this is ethane, single bond, ethane. And we have a halogen attached to one of the carbons. The name for this is fluoroethane. So again, the pieces are fluor for fluorine. We always have a little O in there because that's the common, you know, that's how you name these. Uh, halogen compounds, and then F 
right here is the one, two carbons. Ain is this single bond, right? So that's the, that's the pieces there. Now, we have no numbers here for this one either. We don't need numbers. Why? Because if the fluorine was attached to this carbon, it still would be the same molecule. It would just be flipped around, right? So it's not actually a different isomer. Questions on that one? Stuff. All right, so if we go to move to this one, now this one has a chain of three carbons in a row, so that's where the prop comes from. All single bonds, so that's where the ane comes from. And we see that we have a fluorine here and a fluorine here. So we would have to describe this molecule, and we would have to say which carbons the fluorines are on. And obviously, you know, we count one, two. We wouldn't say two, three, because we want to keep the numbers as low as possible. So there's one and there's two for the fluorines. So this is why you say one comma two, di fluoro propane. So it, it starts getting a little complicated. You have to name the carbons that the, fluor, the fluorines are attached to. If there's two of the same, it's got to be di. If there's three of the same, it would be tri, and so on. Fluoro, make sure you do that because that's their fluorines. And then the carbon chain is three long, so it's prop, all single bonds, propane. So just take a moment to stare at that. In example C here, okay, you see we have a bromine, we have a fluorine, we have a chlorine, right? And so you have to name them with alpha in alphabetical order, right? So which one comes first? The bromine has to come first. So in in the notes, this one right here, the chain must be numbered so that the lowest position number is given to the first one that comes alphabetically, right? So that's what they mean here. You have, this has to be carbon 1, because the bromine is on it. So it's 1-bromo, remember it's the O there, so you attach the O there, 1-bromo. Then which one do you name next? Well, you got to name the chlorine next, because remember it's alphabetical. And that would be on carbon 3 then. So 1-bromo, 3-chloro. Then you have to name the other one, so 2-fluoro. There are four carbons in total, only single bonds, butane. So once again, we have one bromo, three chloro, two fluoro, butane. Okay, a couple more examples here. Just erase that. A couple more examples on in D here. So D, this is a benzene ring. So remember, it's just attached at one spot, so it's floral benzene. That's pretty easy. When we have more than one halogen attached, now we have to start to number them, right? So we know that there are six carbons in a benzene ring. The bromine gets listed first because it's alphabetical. It comes first. So this is going to be the one carbon. So you say one dash bromo. And after you name the number of the carbon, you put a dash and then what's what's there. So one bromo. And then doesn't matter which way you count. If you go up or you go down. Two, three. Okay. And if you do that way, you got to go four, five, six. See that? So we have iodines on number three and number five. So three comma five, because they're the same. Di, because there's two of the same. Iodo, and of course it's benzene. So the naming, there's a lot of pieces to the naming here, okay? And it'll take some, 
some practice, and I'll, I'll give you, you know, some practice on this, uh, questions from the notebook and stuff like that, but you need to study these rules, and that's the rules for uh, the halocarbons and the aerial halides.